One of the world's top energy officials has issued a stark warning that's rippled through global oil markets. Fateh Biro, the chief economist at the International Energy Agency, says the age of cheap oil is over and high prices are here to stay. And for the first time, the International Energy Agency, formed by 28 of the world's developed nations in response to the 1970s oil crises in a bid to prevent future ones, has acknowledged that peak oil is a reality. And, rather disarmingly, that the world has already reached a peak in crude oil production some five years ago in 2006. Around that time in 2005, the then director of the International Energy Agency reportedly dismissed those predicting peak oil as doomsayers. And in 2008, the agency was still reported as dismissing that peak oil would occur. Now the agency's chief economist, Fateh Birol, says that the world's crude oil production peaked in 2006. Oil prices have rallied sharply since the beginning of this year on unrest in North Africa and the Middle East, reaching nearly 130 US dollars a barrel in early May. Prices have eased back slightly in the last couple of weeks, but the ramifications are still being felt by every oil-consuming nation, including, of course, New Zealand. So is the reality now permanently elevated oil prices? And are the world's leaders waking up to the reality of it too late? I spoke to Dr. Fatih Birol in Paris just before we came to air this morning. I began by asking him what is causing the current high oil prices. I think there are a couple of uh, drivers. Some of them are structural uh, drivers, and some of them are uh, what we are experiencing uh, today. As far as the structural drivers are concerned, we can say a strong demand growth, oil demand growth coming mainly from China and other uh, developing countries. And it is mainly uh, coming from the Chinese transportation sector. Namely, uh, Chinese are buying new cars, new trucks. They are using more and more uh, jets uh, with the increasing income levels. And it, this is the main driver of the global oil demand growth. So we have a very strong demand growth. But on the other side, when we look at the production side, the supply side, where will the oil come from, we have some uh, challenges. Outside of the a couple of major countries uh, in uh, Middle East countries, uh, we see uh, that the oil production is uh, rather declining. In the United States, uh, in North Sea, in Europe, and in Mexico, many other countries, and therefore, a bulk of the growth in the future to meet the uh, uh, growth in oil demand need to come from very few number of countries and uh, those countries will have more of a say about the future oil prices in the future uh, compared to uh, past years as they, we do not have alternatives to uh, Middle East oil. So this is the second structure there is a geological fact. And the third one is the current uh, events uh, we have uh, in Middle East and North Africa, uh, they are putting an additional premium on the oil prices uh, and uh, uh, making the uh, investors much uh, more uh, nervous. And the investors are thinking whether there will be oil shortage very soon. Therefore, they are uh, buying uh, oil. So to sum up, there are structural reasons, economic reasons, such as China, India, and other countries' demand growth, plus there are some geological facts that uh, outside of the a very few number of Middle East countries, oil production is uh, in a decline. And the third one is we have some geopolitical events which also uh, trigger the uh, price levels. How much is the growth in worldwide demand outstripping New growth in new supplies, or as you are now telling us, actual constraint in new supplies. How much is the shortage, and is it here now? Uh, currently, uh, the uh, oil demand growth is uh, uh, about uh, 1 million barrels per day higher than the supply. But if the uh, producing countries want to, to do so, uh, they could increase the uh, supply. But currently, we do not see that uh, 
desire coming from the producing countries. And I think this is a, a risky business because when we look at the next couple of uh, quarters in this year, we uh, expect the demand, uh, seasonal demand, mainly coming from the uh, new refineries. Many refineries were in the last couple of uh, months in maintenance. When they start to uh, come in the picture, there will be growth of 3 to 3.5 million barrels per day of growth uh, from uh, those refineries. Plus, in China this year, uh, we didn't have uh, a lot of uh, rain. And therefore, in China, we may see that the uh, electricity uh, generation may shift somehow from hydropower resources to the diesel uh, generators, which in turn may further increase the oil demand. So uh, I am really worried that we may see higher prices than uh, we have now if we do not see more oil from the producer side uh, coming to the markets, which in turn, I believe, is a significant risk for the global economic recovery. So if it's a billion, uh, sorry, a, a million barrels a, a day, uh, per year already. Yes, there's, there's a difference uh, currently, but as I said, if the producers please. wanted to do so, they could increase the production, but whether or not they will do so is a question mark. What is your prediction, given all these variables, for how much oil prices will continue to rise over the next three years? Uh, it is uh, by law. I cannot give you any price prediction, but what I can tell you First of all, uh, that uh, I believe uh, forever uh, the the era of cheap oil is over. The price levels we have been witnessing in before 2008, uh, so $50, $40, $60, those days are gone. And uh, we will have to uh, live with the higher prices. But the prices with the current levels are uh, very high. And they come at a time when the, the recovery efforts are still very fragile and the global economy is uh, rather vulnerable. Especially in the United States, U.S. economy, we already see some weak economic data coming, uh, questioning the uh, economic recovery uh, efforts. So, uh, uh, therefore, I think uh, the oil prices, uh, the, uh, further increase in the oil prices, may uh, damage the uh, global economic recovery, which in turn may slow down the oil demand for, uh, for uh, uh, some time. But when we look at the, uh, the general trend, I expect that the prices will stay uh, at, the, at higher levels. So we can feel the, the, the pressure that, uh, or certainly the consideration that you would like those oil con uh, producing countries to give to their supply at the moment, but you have also said there are other constraints, there are uh, geological constraints on the, on, on the future supply of oil. In fact, Definitely. what you've said, and for the first time we've heard this from the agency, is that crude oil production has peaked and perhaps peaked five years ago. Mm -hmm. What is your analysis of... Uh, or the analysis behind that finding, as I said, the first time that the International Oil Agency has acknowledged peak oil? So uh, what we say is that uh, conventional oil uh, in 2006 uh, has uh, peaked, but uh, we have also unconventional oil and the natural gas liquids, which are coming in the picture. And uh, therefore, uh, we see that the uh, global uh, oil production can continue to increase somehow. We have about today 88 million barrels per day of uh, production. According to our projections, uh, the global oil production, the total oil production, crude oil plus unconventional oil, with the unconventional oil we mean the mainly the oil sands in, uh, in uh, Canada, in Venezuela and elsewhere, plus uh, the NGL, the natural gas liquids, can contribute to that about 10 million barrels per day on top of today. However, one, is, one thing is clear. Uh, about uh, in the next 20 years, about 90% of the growth in oil production need to come from five or six countries in the world, namely Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, and whether or not these countries, especially in the geopolitical situation they are in, 
uh, are they going to be able to make those investments? Will they want to make those investments? This is a question mark which puts a lot of production uh, growth forecasts into question. I have seen a figure that the world needs another four Saudi Arabia-sized oil supplies to meet yes, forthcoming yes, demand. Yes, That's yes, the yes, scale yes. of it. Yeah, this is our this is our number. This is what we have uh, set since 2008 in order to uh, compensate the decline in the uh, fields I mentioned, especially in the non OPEC countries, and meet the growth of oil demand coming from China, India, and other countries. In the next 20 years, we need four new Saudi Arabias, a tall order, especially if you look at the uh, if you look at the current geopolitical situation uh, where we are and from which countries we may hope to get this oil. So therefore, I mean, the, we shouldn't only uh, complain and uh, 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 the, to uh, criticize uh, that uh, we, are, we didn't do our jobs as the governments and the others. What we should do is how can we move from an oil-based economy to, uh, and, and to alternatives. And uh, we are already late to do that, but it is better to start now uh, rather, uh, rather than uh, later. What went wrong? Because five years ago, 2006, the International Oil uh, or International Energy Agency was still saying, you know, people who talk about peak oil, and I'm talking about crude oil here, are doomsdayers. And yet the predictions in 2006 for oil production was that it might rise to 120 million barrels a day by 2030. Your current figure now for 2030 is 96 million barrels. Why has it peaked and why did you not see it then? I think you are mixing uh, uh, two different things. Uh, the, the, the one above 100 uh, million barrels per day you caught is if... Uh, you just extrapolate uh, to the uh, past, to the future, to show the uh, to show the extrapolation, the so-called business as usual. But uh, you are talking about the second one that I quoted to you now. Our uh, likely case, base case, takes into consideration what kind of uh, policies governments can put in place in order to in order to uh, address the climate change issues and at the same time address the oil security issues. So our likely case is uh, about uh, 98 million barrels per day, which is, as I said, 10 million barrels per day higher than uh, uh, today. And that is for all sources, crude plus the unconventional exactly. sources? Exactly. All right. Exactly. All right. exactly. Exactly. Would you concede, though, that the agency was late to detect, detect a peaking of crude oil production and that perhaps many governments have been to? No, I think we were the first ones uh, in, in a, making a serious study on the decline rate of the fields worldwide. We were the first one in the world to make such a detailed study, come up with the results, and the results of our study uh, were summarized in one uh, lineup, namely uh, the age of cheap oil is over. This was one, and this was based on the uh, the another analysis on the decline that you have yourself quoted that we need four new Saudi Arabias. Considering the difficulties to get four new Saudi Arabias from the point of view of economics, from from the point of view of the geology, and from from the point of view of the oil policies of key countries, we came to the conclusion that the the era of uh, cheap oil is over. If I'm not wrong, we are the first one to make...